I am. Hello, peeps. Trying to make sure that uh, I was having some audio issues. Oh, wait, mic is muted. That mic is not muted. Can you guys hear me? I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with this. <laughs> if you're watching this later on, not live, I apologize for the uh, the confusion. If you're watching this later on, not live. Oh yeah, you can hear me. Okay, I was trying to do uh, this this webcam here to like talk, and then I have this other webcam over here, which is uh, oh, wait, let me turn that off. Other webcam over here, which is going to show you like me actually listing stuff. Look at that! Isn't that something? Can you guys still hear me when I when I switch to that camera? Bob Bias, what's up? There he is. We can hear you. Hi, Flipping Mama Five, Colby, Cheese Cheese Thrifts. Okay, cool, awesome. So we're gonna we'll we'll get it working. I'm good at working. Uh, what am I listing today? Gosh, what what shouldn't I list today? I have a ton of stuff to list. I went to Crazy Cast Boys today and filmed a video uh, with like this. That was the second time I went to Crazy Cast Boys, so it was um really just to see if the like this this restock day was as good as the first restock day, uh, and it it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I'm not going to show you everything that I got because uh, that would kind of ruin the video, <laughs> but. Um, but we'll we'll maybe list one or two things and some stuff from my death pile. I just I like doing I, do, I like doing live stuff. Um, uh, list yeah the white claw. It's Friday Friday two sixteen. I'm getting an early start. K Moritz, first time listener. Welcome to the welcome to the channel. I was gonna say welcome to the show, but there's not really much to sh much to show. All right, let me get a let's see. Boom, boom, boom. That I'm gonna list this little thing right here. This is a swig cup. Yeah, swig cup has a little straw with it and everything over there. This is one of those things I got. For, oh, let me switch to this other camera. How about that? This is one of the that uh, that lady that gave me a bunch of free stuff. She gave me this, and um, I'm just gonna. Get it listed. Bring Mo's in. Mo's is sleeping, as always. That, I'll turn it this way. This is not going to be a very profitable item for me, and I never would have bought it. Um, never would have bought it to resell. Some dirt on the bottom of it. I'll probably clean it once before I before I actually ship it out. It looks to be new. There's still like a sticker on the bottom, so it hasn't been like through the dishwasher or anything yet. Um, but I will clean it before I before I ship it out. Although it does look brand new. Any idea how much swig? Oh, it's Giggle Giggle sent me a $4 super sticker. Thank you so much. Canada, Canada $4. Isn't that, isn't Canada money more, more expensive? Magazines are cost more, maybe dollars or more. I don't know. Either way, thank you so much. Is that some laminate flooring I use? I don't know what this is called. I think it's wall paneling. I got it at Lowe's uh, for like 30 bucks for a whole sheet. And I got enough to do this setup here as well as the flat lay down there on the ground. Uh, and I like it. A lot of people ask me if I think white backgrounds are important and I don't, I don't think they're that important. How, how do you determine how long to let an item sit? Uh, once it's listed, I just, it's just listed. Some stuff has been listed for over a year. I don't really, I don't, like once an item's been listed for six months, I don't take it out of my store because it can still sell. There's some things I've listed. I just sold a map that I listed in 2018 and it sold like two weeks ago. Hi from Tijuana, Baja, Mexico. Hello, Monica Villalobos. Villalobos. 
original closet. So you do not believe in the white background that eBay has in its guideline? Um, not really. I mean, I think if you have good items with good pictures, they don't have to be on a white background. I mean, I on my eBay, I have sold $19,161.66 worth of items in the last 90 days, and none of those have been on a white background. So it's not certainly not necessary for sales. It might give you a little bit of boost, but white backgrounds are just really hard to keep clean, in my opinion. What do you think about selling Bibles? I do sell Bibles. I have no problem selling Bibles. Uh, Gail Delisle? Gail Delisle? I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry, Miss Gail. Uh, but she says, first time or listening. Welcome. Welcome, Miss Gail. Big Drift, what's up? I gave you a shout out in today's video. I found a, uh, a bike tire at Crazy Cas Boys. It was like a Goodyear something. I don't know. I didn't end up getting it because I couldn't really find soul comps on it and it was a weird size, but I thought of you. Are eBay fees too high or just right? I have no problem with eBay fees. 12.5% is very reasonable for uh, what eBay provides. Oh, my audio is messed up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just so sorry. All right, I just took the I just took the other camera away. I can't get it. I can't uh, I can't get it working. It's the postal postal worker. There shouldn't be any more. There shouldn't be any more um, any more audio because now I only have one. Yes. How many how many items have I listed so far? I've listed none. That's the beauty of doing live listings. Uh, you don't really get to list list as much stuff. Audio is great. Cool, 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 cool. So sorry you can't get a good picture of my background here, but it's just a piece of fake wood. All right, I need to let me just list this item. Wait, let me search it first. Swig, what's it called? Swig wine tumbler. Pretty sure that's what this would be called. Uh, yeah, it looks like brand new. They sell for like fourteen, like twelve to fourteen dollars free shipping. Uh, so honestly, this isn't even worth my time. Well, floral. Maybe this design is different. Floral. Uh, no, still not worth my time. If anybody wants to buy this, send me an email here tornado gmail dot com. Uh, Ten bucks free shipping. Not going to bother listing that on eBay. All right, what's next? Go around, around here. What's those? List this because this will be nice and. Nice and easy. This is uh, one of my crazy Casboys finds from today. This is a photo, like a photo coffee table book um, from Guido Guidi in Sardegna, 1974-2011. I have no idea what that means or what that is, but I looked it up on eBay earlier and I think it's selling for a lot of money. Let's see. Guido. Guido Guidi. Oh, and also the barcode on the back says signed edition. So, Restrana in Sardegna. Sar Sardegna. Okay, so here's one that sold um, Guido Gooding. You guys see that? $97 plus shipping. That's pretty good. I'm going to take a look at that and see. How can. Uh, okay. Iden, Iden, I see your question. I see it. How can you sell more than 10 items on eBay? You have to sell two items. You sell two or three items on eBay and you ship them out on time and they get to the buyer and there's no issues. 
then you can contact eBay. I would recommend contact contacting them through Facebook, eBay for business on Facebook uh, and say, hey, I sold three items and it went great. Can I increase my listing limit from 10 into like 50? And they'll say, yeah, have at it. Iden, Eden, whatever your name is. Um, yeah, that's how you do that. You have to sell something first. You can't just um, you can't just keep listing forever. Valentino Giardina emailed me and said, I want the Tumblr. Valen it's, it's yours. My PayPal is Harry Tornado. Come on, Harry Tornado at gmail.com. 10 bucks even, smiley face. Somebody in my video yesterday about my income asked me why why I pay PayPal fees on like direct sales like that. Uh, and it's because uh, if you if you want to do things right, the whole PayPal friends and family thing is really only meant for friends and family. Um, you guys are my friends, I guess, but I'm not gonna, um, I just feel weird. Like, I don't know, like if you want to pay me friends and family, you can, obviously that would be nice. I don't have to pay fees, but I, I would feel weird about like asking people to pay friends and family because I don't know. It's just three percent. I feel like I should just pay it. You know, I feel weird just like using PayPal for free. Um, but I don't know. And it also doesn't guarantee anything. So like, people could think I'm like scamming them or something. I don't know. I just, I just don't. How many actives do I have? Not a lot. Like three hundred and forty-five or two hundred? No, three three forty-five. Let me, let me make sure. I have not been. I've listed like four things this whole week. I have three hundred forty-five active listings right now. 35 that I can send offers to watchers. Yeah, plus the PayPal fee is a write-off anyway. I mean, the whole month of September, I only paid 30 bucks in PayPal fees. It's, it's really not that much. Ashley Gilpin, $5 super sticker. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate that. Could you use Venmo on Insta? Where'd it go? Since it has no fees? Uh, yeah. I, anytime somebody buys something, I give them the option. You know, PayPal, I, I, Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App. Uh, and if they balance Facebook, uh, you can pay me through Facebook as well. Um, and I, I think PayPal is the only one of those methods that that charges anything. I think Venmo charges you if you want to if you want to transfer it out of Venmo into your account. I think there's a charge, but if you want to leave it in Venmo to like use it for a future purchase, um, there's there's nothing. I usually just leave my money in Venmo, and if I buy something on Facebook Marketplace and they take Venmo, I'll just use that money to pay them later. Um, <laughs> Lightning Spark 124. I have 210 listings and I'm 15. Wow, that's pretty good. When I was 15, I had a skateboard. That's all, that's all I had. Golly, my neighbor. My neighbor over there, she's super nice. And she's probably like, she's gotta be like 80. Has to be in her 80s. And she is outside working in her yard 24 seven, like from the time the butt crack of dawn to the butt crack of sunset. <laughs> she is just out there working in her yard, cutting her own grass, trimming bushes. She has like some, uh, she hires people to like help her like lay sod down and do the stuff she can't do. But I got to hand it to her. She just does not know when to stop. How long does it take to sell an item? It depends on the item. Like this book that I'm listening. I don't imagine this is going to be a very quick seller as I don't know how many, so many sold comps were there. Search Guido Guidi. Uh, the last time this book sold was October, October 2nd. Oh, wait. Oh, that's a different one. Okay. This is one Guido Guidi per strata sign, which is a different book, but the same author, same photographer. And this one sold for $195 plus shipping. That is nuts. Let's see there. Yeah, so it's not something that sells all the time. So this is probably going to take six months, six months to a year to sell, but paid seven bucks for it and it doesn't take up that much room. So I'll get it listed and then I'll just shove it in one of my bins. And then six months from now when it sells, about hey, I paid seven bucks for that at Crazy Cas Boys and it sold for a hundred. So $93 in profit. Do I have kids? No, I do not have kids. I enjoy my free time and disposable income. 
You have a dog. And he's beautiful. Okay, so this is a picture here. Take a picture of the back of it. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic because then it wouldn't be new. So I'm just going to take a picture of all the sides. I'll take a picture of the barcode showing that the barcode says it's signed. I don't see a signature, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Okay, so let's go to eBay. Might start selling on Etsy. That'd be cool. Are you into selling Pokemon? I don't know anything about Pokemon, but I'm really curious. Um, I, know, I just want to. I just want to open cards. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Do I ever put up auctions? I have one auction now for like this Army Beer Stein. I got it Salvation Army for like six bucks. Um, I'll show it to you. Looks like that. Okay, the Salvation Army. It's brand new. It had a little certificate of authenticity somewhere. I think it's over there in the thing. Um, it's from the Bradford Exchange, and it's numbered A2323. Masterpiece signed from 2016. I thought it was pretty cool, and I couldn't find a sole comp on it, so I decided to auction that off. But I really, I really don't, uh, I really don't auction things off very often. The only, the only time I would auction something is if it's something that's been listed for a really long time, and I was just tired of seeing it in my store, so I just start it on a ninety nine cent auction plus shipping, and then whatever it sold for, it sold for, just to get it out. Or if you have something that's like really rare, like where the demand is higher than the supply, you know, like uh, like that uh, can opener that I sold the other day. I probably could have auctioned that off because there was like three or four sold comps in the last 90 days, but none listed. So that means in the last 90 days, they're selling about one a month on eBay. Um, but there's none, there's none available right now. So I listed mine higher. I think the highest sold comp was 90 at that time. So I listed mine for a hundred and it sold within like 12 hours. So I probably could have auctioned that off and maybe it would have got up to like 120 to 130. You know, you never really know. It certainly wouldn't have, it would at least sold for a hundred, obviously. Um, so maybe I should have auctioned that off, but for the most part, I just, I just list stuff by it now. Buy a booster box off eBay and unbox it. That's the problem. I don't know what a booster box is. <laughs> Eden, are you, why did, did you get, did you change your name? You weren't eating five ninety five hundred before. Please answer this question. Have you seen two pretty best friends? I ain't never seen two pretty best friends. It's always one of them got to be ugly. Oh. Have you ever broke anything while listing? No. I've had things break after I list. And then I like I list them and they're fine. And then I put them in a bin or whatever. And then when they sell, I go to get them. And then I see that they're broken. And in that case, so fun fact, just in case you didn't know, if you ever have to cancel an eBay item because it's broken or you can't find it, never say it's because it's broken and you can't find it. Anytime, like I, I just sold a guitar tuner to my friend, David Kelly. Uh, David, thank you for your support if you're watching this, but I went to go pack it up. It was a, a Casboys, I think I found it on Casboys on like $2 day or $1 day or something. Um, and it worked, but like it was a clip on guitar tuner and like the little, I basically had a little plastic arm that like held the tuner and like clipped on and one of the little plastic brackets was broken. So it clipped on, but it would fall off pretty easily. Uh, so I canceled that. And for the, when you cancel an item on eBay, you have to give a reason. And for that reason, I said, buyer changed mine. I always say either buyer asked to cancel buyer changed mine or something wrong with the buyer's address. I never say the item was lost or broken because if you do that, that counts as like a ding or whatever you want to call it on eBay. And if you do that like two or three times, you can fall up like below seller standard. Um, I think it's dumb because like stuff breaks, like stuff happens. You know, what if I, what if my garage burns down? You know, it's not really my fault. Uh, so I don't, I don't like that eBay dings people for that. Like they're just being honest, like, Oh, you know, the item's broken. Sorry. And then 
you know, two or three items break and you're going to fall below sta seller standard. And, um, and that's a big deal. Like if you, I don't remember the exact qualifications, but if you fall below standards, but I think it's, if you fall below standard as a seller, your eBay fees increase to like 15%. But that was like, the old system when you were paying 10% eBay and like 3% PayPal. So I imagine it's probably like 16 or 17%. So if you're a heavy seller selling $10,000 a month and your eBay fees jump up 5% because you broke a couple items, that's ridiculous. So no, never, never tell eBay you lost or broke anything. You got to cancel an order, just cancel it. Can a buyer report you for that? I don't know. Buyers usually don't mind. Well, I mean, you also want to send them a message. Like if you cancel the order, be like, you can tell the buyer what's going on. Like, hey, so sorry. I saw you bought this. I went to go pull it and it's broken. I don't want to send you broken items. So I gave you a full refund and canceled the order. I'm so sorry. Um, and I've never had a problem with it. People are like, oh, cool. No problem. Whatever. You know, they can just go buy it again from somebody else. Um, the problem is eBay. What is the webcam for? I had this webcam to show you this over here, but it's not working. What if it's cross listed and you say that it's no longer for sale? Yeah, if I'm only, I'm only talking about canceling things that have sold on eBay. So if you sell, if you have a thing cross posted and it sells on Mercari and eBay at the same time, I would always cancel the Mercari sale first because I don't think Mercari dings you for canceling orders. Maybe they, maybe they do now, but they didn't, they didn't used to eBay is definitely the most strict when it comes to canceling orders. So generally, if you sell something on both eBay and any other platform like Poshmark, definitely cancel the Poshmark sale and sell it on eBay. Uh, is it possible to sell stuffed animals on eBay? Yes, I do it all the time. I have one going out today, I think, and I sold an armadillo yesterday. You're not going to sell them for very much money. I would look for like Build-A-Bear. Um, Build-A-Bear Build Build stuffed animals have the Build-A-Bear logo on their front right paw usually. Um, if they have a paw, it's an animal that has a paw and look for stuff that's not a bear, stuff that's Build-A-Bear brand, but not a bear. Uh, Emily Conway had a really good video about that. Um, some of those Build-A-Bears are extremely rare, like they might have been limited production and they could sell for hundreds of dollars. I think the the most expensive stuffed animal I sold was out of a Goodwill palette. It was a, a stuffed rabbit. I think it was like, I think. I don't think it was a, I've had one that was like a rabbit head with a blanket body, but this one was just a really soft stuffed rabbit and actually threw it in like the yard sale pile. And somebody commented on the video and they're like, check that rabbit. I think that's whatever brand. And I did. And it was, um, it was great condition. It was, I don't remember the brand, but I listed it and for like 55 bucks free shipping and it sold within like an hour full asking price. So there are definitely some good stuffed animals to be on the lookout for. My one-year-old thinks you are, quote, daddy on the TV. Her dad has a beard and wears a hat, too. I always wear my hat. Anytime I take my hat off, but so in Dream Deals today, uh, not Dream Deals, Crazy Cats Boys, I was wearing my GoPro strapped to my head, and I took my hat off to put my GoPro on, but then I realized, like, I don't really like that, so I just took my GoPro off, but I left my hat in the truck, so I just had my hair, like, smushed down from wearing my hat, and I was filming, <laughs> like, filming myself in, in Crazy Cats Boys. And uh, I did not, I don't like my hair right now. I like it if I have time to fix it, you know, like spike up the front a little bit. That's all I can do when it's this short, but um, I usually wear a hat for those reasons. So if it's cross-listed and you sell another platform with eBay. So, so if, if the item, okay. So if the item has already sold on eBay and you have to cancel it because it's broken or lost, Never say it's broken or lost. Always say the buyer asked to cancel or something's wrong with the buyer's buyer's address. Something that's not your fault. Uh, if you just want to cancel an item on eBay just because like it's sold on another platform, but it hasn't sold on eBay yet, you can cancel that for any reason. eBay only dings you if the item sells and then you have to cancel it. If you just have something listed that you need to cancel, you can cancel that. No problem. You inspired me to sell on Facebook Marketplace. Thanks. So <laughs> Facebook, fun, fun story about that. So that um, I, I picked up that guitar stand in the last Goodwill Palette video that I, that I did. It's like the little foldy, foldy up one. I said I was going to list on Facebook and I did. I listed for 15 bucks. And this lady messaged me like last week and asked, she's like, can I come next Thursday to get it? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever. Just like message me before and that's fine. And uh, I, I've been like giving out my address lately because I, I don't really 
think anybody's out to get me. So people buy something from me on Facebook. I'll just, I'll tell them either meet me somewhere if I'm going out. But that day, I usually stay home on Thursdays. So I was like, yeah, I gave her my address last week and kind of forgot about it. And then yesterday, knock at the door, like 11 o'clock in the morning. She's like, hey, I'm here to get the guitar, the guitar strap. She didn't message me or anything. Like she told me a week ago she was coming. I was like, oh, I'm in my jammy jams. Okay, let me uh, let me go get the guitar stand for you. But it's old, 15 bucks. And the pal whole palette was only 25. So that's a pretty good sale. Uh, can you just drop off packages at the post office or do you need to get them scanned? Uh, so that's up to you. If you trust, so like I have a post office that's like 20 minutes away from me and I trust them implicitly. I trust them with my life. So I know I can be like, hey, hey, Fred, you know, dropping off packages. I, they always scan them in. But there's a post office really close to my house that I do not trust at all with anything, much less my life. So there I either make them scan everything in or if I sell everything on eBay, I'll print off the eBay scan form and then give them the packages and make sure they scan the scan form in to make sure everything is scanned in. I've dropped off stuff there in the past. I, I've had one day where I I had like somebody on the phone and I had to go and there was like 40 people in line. So I just dropped off the packages there and I was like, can you please, please, please make sure these are just scanned in today. Just at some point today before you leave, scan these in. And they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. And they weren't scanned in for like 48 hours after that. I don't understand. Like I, I get it that it takes time to scan stuff in, but just scan it in. Like who, oh, five o'clock. I know we still got packages left here, but sorry, I'm out of here. You should just have somebody that's just scanning stuff in. You know how much money I've spent with the U.S. Postal Service over the last two years of selling on eBay? It, or just eBay sellers in general. Gosh, I feel like I feel like resellers. Resellers in general are responsible for so much package mail with the USPS. And they just act like some of them, some of some postal workers act like I'm such a burden on them, like ruining their day when I come in with 30 packages. I'm like, this is how you get paid. <laughs> like, just scan myself. Traveling Salvation, what's up guys? The way you put all your labels in one scan form is cool. The PO would love us. You should do a video on it, go in and try it. So it's kind of clunky. So basically you just have to, I think you just have to, so on your eBay homepage, you can get to your shipping labels by one of two ways. You can go to like, like click the drop down and go to selling and then go to like pending shipment or whatever and click that. But if you click your eBay alerts, like the little bell notification that says like 10 items left to ship today, you click that and it'll open up the bulk shipping tool. You have to ship through the bulk shipping tool to get to the scan form. Um, and I think you just have to ship at least one. So if you go through, like if you have 10 orders to ship, you ship nine, just however you want. And then the 10th one, if you ship that one through the bulk shipping tool, it should give you a total, like the scan form should be everything you, sh you shipped out that day. So all 10 orders should be on that. But to get to the scan form, you have to ship at least one item through the bulk shipping tool on eBay. Harrison Brown, drink of the claw. Cheers, brother. Yeah, I, I like them. I'm not a I'm not a heavy drinker at all. I I don't really like the taste of alcohol. But the first thing I ever drank, it was when I was like 16 at a friend's house, and it was Guinness beer, like dark, dark Guinness beer. And I was like, oh man, we're drinking beer. One sip of that, and I was like, this is disgusting. Adults <laughs> adults drink this stuff. You guys are out of your freaking mind, man. To this day, I do not like dark beer. Give me a nice Bud Light or something. I didn't, says Jake Paul called me out. Go check out his story. Why do I find that hard to believe that Jake Paul does anything regarding me? Has he been done with PayPal or can I switch back? Um, I guess you're talking about eBay managed payments. Uh, I would not, if you're already in eBay managed payments, that's, you're not going to be able to switch back. I don't even know why you would want to because uh, eBay managed payments is awesome. Okay, I need to list this. Guidi Sardegna. This is a listing live stream. I got to list at least one thing. Okay, it sold for $97. Sell one like this. Add pictures, select from gallery, 
bam, 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 bam. Title, In Sardegna, signed edition, 1974-2011 by Guido Guidi. Um, I think it's coffee table book. Okay, item specifics. Condition, uh, I'm going to say brand new. It's still wrapped in plastic, brand new. ISBN, is there an ISBN? Not, yeah, that's, I think this is the, would that, would this, anybody know, would this, would this number right there be the ISBN number? It doesn't say ISBN, but it looks like ISBN. That Would that be it? Focus. Guinness, no, no bueno. Yeah, I don't. People say I'm not manly enough to drink Guinness, and they're right. What was my best thrift store pickup this week? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. My mail lady's here. Hold on. I'll be right back. How's it going? You guys hear her music? She's really fun. She's, uh, I don't know what happened to my original male lady that broke her arm. I figured, I thought she'd be back by now. What's, an arm takes like six weeks to heal, right? She's been gone for like three or four months. This is, oh, these are my boots. I ordered some, uh, some Georgia boots. I really like slip on Chelsea boots. Uh, decided to give Georgia boots a try. Never. Never uh, had Georgia boots before. This live stream has turned into an unboxing. There we go. Anyways, bad baby Janus. Should I try them on? I got these from Amazon, by the way, not eBay. Got to get the, got to get the angle just right. How do they look? On a scale of seven to ten. I give them a ten. Pretty comfortable. I thought they might be too big because I, I didn't know if I should get a non 9.89. That's good. 10, 11. Who you guys are? 9,000. They are bootyful. What's up, man? Uh, guys, rewilded reselling. That's my friend Wyatt. He went to Crazy Casboys with me today. And he's a good guy. He just started a YouTube channel, made one video, working on a second one. And he is a direct. Competitor of mine lives in my town, but he's my friend. Look at that. That one looks exactly the same as the other one, luckily for me. Now let's just wear them around. It's <sighs> a workout. You had, ooh, excuse me, you had boots like that, not very comfy. Okay, I didn't. I've answered your question like a bunch of times, and you're gonna like get blocked, son. I just lost all privileges. Whew. Tyson Lee, aren't you supposed to be listing stuff? Am I concerned with COVID? Bring, bring items home? No, I'm not concerned at all.
managed to find the office monopoly at a thrift store. I found um, the office stuff actually does pretty well if you can find it at thrift stores. I think I sold like an office, I think it was like Office Clue or Office Trivia or something like that. It was an office game. I paid like four bucks for it and I think it sold on Amazon like a year ago for like $70 or something. It was like still sealed in, in the plastic. Can you get a ding for that music while live? No, because this live is not monetized. You didn't see any ads on this. I, I don't really like monetizing my live streams. This is just a hangout. Nine, seven, eight, one, nine, one, two, three, three, nine, five, nine, four. Julia Fleener started a YouTube channel last night. So nervous. Julia, to be honest with you, I was nervous when I started my channel because it's weird. You know, you're talking to a camera and you have to like, I don't know, the, the hardest thing for me was like treating the camera like a person. Like I'm talking to a Logitech 1080p C920 web cam right now, but I'm, I have the mindset that I'm talking to Julia, what was your last, Julia Fleener. So right now I'm talking to Julia Fleener. I'm like you know, having a conversation with her, but I'm talking to a, a camera. And that's like the weirdest thing, like trying to be yourself and have a normal conversation without another person there. Like yesterday's video, I filmed all of it yesterday completely alone in my house. And it's just, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird, like talking to yourself and trying to, trying to sound normal and like relatable when there's not another human in the room. Um, but I do get, I do get nervous still, but I think I made like 260 videos so far. So you, you just get better at it as time goes on. I forget what I'm saying on camera all the time. Yesterday's video was scripted. Actually, I typed out like pretty much everything I wanted to say just so I could like keep it nice and tight and compact. I mean, there's a lot of information in like an 11 minute video. I didn't want to have time for any like ums, buts, or pauses. So you can try scripting it. Um, I think if you're starting a channel, your first couple of videos should be very short, like three to five minutes. Just put put out something, make it easy to edit, make it easy to watch, and you know, go from there. Author is Guido Guidi. Publication year 2011. That's good. Custom skew. I'm going to put this in this bin right here, which is. Oh, oh no. It's the G bin. Also, you can write in the custom skew field, you can write whatever you want. I usually just do the what bin the item is in, like G, but I could write G bought the item at. Crazy Cats Boys on November 20th, 2020 and paid $7 plus, plus tax. That way when the item sells, you have all that information coming back to you. Um, so custom SKU is a very, very useful field that I am significantly underutilizing. Okay, please see photos for details and let me know if you have any questions. Pricing. I'm not going to auction this because it's not something that needs to be auctioned because the demand for this is so low. So I'm just going to list it for $99. Turn on offers. And then I'll do free shipping. Priority, one business day. Uh, also, I get asked a lot, how do I how do I put in my package dimensions without shipping, without actually boxing up the item? This book is pretty heavy. Um, so I'm probably going to actually, yeah, I need to ship that media now because, well, you can probably fit in it. Hmm. No, it's fine. Um, so this, I'm not going to like box it up. It's, it probably weighs like four pounds or so. Um, so and I'm doing free shipping anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put four pounds. It'll probably go in like a 1095 box or a 1092 box. Um, so the length, like a box is bigger than this. So say like 15 by... 12 by four or something. I think that's roughly the, the 1092 box. 
dimensions don't really matter that much as long as they're not like crazy, crazy high. And four pounds, there's not really much of a difference between four and five pounds either. Um, stuff like this, I just kind of estimate the, the weight and dimensions. Priority, free ship. And done. List my item. Five dollar Canadian, five Canadian dollars. I have ten Canadian dollars to no, the first one was four. So I have nine Canadian dollars. I could buy a magazine. Thanks for answering my question, Harry. You are an inspiration to start reselling. My pleasure. I don't know a lot, but I'm happy to share any information that I do know. Since I have most of my inventory at my home, how do you have it insured? Um, I don't. I just, I mean, I have regular home insurance and these would probably just qualify as personal property. So my personal property limit on our home insurance, I think is like $80,000. Uh, we did, definitely do not have $80,000 worth of stuff. So if the whole house burns down, I would get a check for $80,000 to cover the cost of all of our contents. Um, and I think that would be more than enough to replace all of our contents as well as all of my uh, inventory. Sitting here talking and editing videos with Leroy from Blood Sweat Cell. Prison of Profit and Leroy, two of my favorite guys. So happy you guys are hanging out together. Anything I won't sell because shipping scares me? Yeah, big stuff. My friend Drew, Profit Monsters, he sells like rock band kits and stereo receivers and all that crazy big stuff. And I just, I have some sitting back there on my shelf in my death pile, but I just, I do not want to ship it. Do I normally set a minimum on my offers when you when when I list? No, I just let people offer whatever they want. If it's if they insult you, I'll just if you, like if I list something for hundred bucks and you offer me ten, I'll just counter at ninety nine. <laughs> I'm, I'm just if you're gonna be sassy to me, I'm gonna be sassy to you. Red Dirt Picker four nine nine super chat just posted my first video and I'm inspired by your consistent content. I appreciate the integrity and example. Thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. Good luck on your YouTube channel. Just keep going. Don't. I think a lot of people just make like three videos and they get five to 10 views each and they think it's not working and then they quit. Like you've got to make, like I probably made a hundred videos before I had a thousand subscribers. So it, it just takes a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot of time. <laughs> Watching this and trying to check out at Walmart is proving to be a challenge. I can imagine. I can definitely imagine how, how challenging that is. Do you do a basic? Uh, do you do basic on eBay before you open a store? So right now, I think eBay allows you to list like 250 things for free without without a store. With for free, like not how you don't have to pay an insertion fee. You still have to pay your eBay fees, but you like it. normally if you didn't have a store, you'd have to pay like 35 cents per listing. But they've waived that up to 250 items, I believe. The last time I checked. Uh, so if you don't want to list more than 250 items, then you don't have to have an eBay store. Uh, but if you want to list more than that, I would I would get one. I have the premier store, which gives me a thousand free listings every like up to a thousand active listings at any given time. Fifty dollars in, in shipping supplies every quarter uh, subscription to Terra Peak, which is like a sales history chart website thing. Um, I have like vacation mode on my store, just random benefits like that. But it's really it's really the the listings is what is what gets you. I think I did the math before, like if you, well, this was before when, when eBay, eBay was giving you like 50 free listings and then anything after that, you had to pay 35 cents per listing. So I was like, okay, if like the, in the basic store, I think the starter store is like 9.99 and that's pointless. The starter store is pointless. Never get the starter store. The next store, like the basic store, I think gives you two, I think it gave you 250. I don't remember if it was 250 or 500, but it was a pretty good amount of listings for free. And then you get a discounted rate, anything over that. Um, so I'm like, you know, if you had to pay listing fees on, I think it was 70 listings. So you get your 50 free. And then if you want to list another 70, that would be like the break even point. Like when you list 70 listings at 35 cents a piece, that would be like $22 or something. So at that point, you should just go ahead and get the store. So you get all these other extra listings for free. I'm sorry, I'm like babbling. 
eBay stores and eBay fees and everything about eBay is incredibly complicated. So when I'm trying to speak about it off the top of my head. It's not easy to put everything together. Basically, if you want to list less than 250 things, you don't need a store right now. 200, is that what it is? I don't know. eBay changes all the time. Pros and cons of having a store. Um, like, my, like you can bulk edit your listings. Like if you don't have a store, you can't bulk edit your listings. That's really annoying. Um, white Claw kicking in. <laughs> uh, I think bulk editing your listings is really valuable. The store, the store uh, shipping supply coupon is really valuable for me. I use it every quarter. Um, yeah, just I'm, I'm sure somebody's made a video on YouTube about like what each eBay store offers you, uh, and you just got to figure out if it's worth it for you. By the way, you don't get the coupon for free supplies until the $24.99 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that starter store, the $9.99 does not come with free shipping supplies. It's, it's pointless. No, there's no good reason to get that store. Do I use Pirate Ship? Yes, I use Pirate Ship. However, I am a firm believer that I'm one of the only people in the world that uses Pirate Ship correctly. Um, pretty much everybody abuses the box and bag method on Pirate Ship. Um, I personally made a Pirate Ship video that took me about 10 hours to research, film, edit, and upload. And I, that video was seen by the CEO of Pirate Ship and the chief marketing person, person in charge of marketing for Pirate Ship. Uh, and they both said that it was 100% accurate. And they thanked me for finally explaining their complicated system, which is not really that complicated. What kind of things would you edit in bulk? Uh, you could edit your shipping methods. You could edit, um, I don't know. Uh, like, like prices, you could make, you could put everything on sale. Oh, you can run sales. That's another benefit to having a store. You could put all your listings on like 20% off. Um, yeah. If nobody has seen it, you have to go back and watch Harry Tornado's 100 subscriber video. One of the funniest things I've ever seen. That was a good video. I'm pretty proud of that. I made a lot of good videos back in the day that nobody watched because I just didn't have a lot of subscribers. But I still put like time and energy into making those videos. Some of my best videos I've ever made that I'm proud of have like 800 views. <laughs> Hob Horse, $5 super chat, first super chat ever. I watch both you and Lindy Glenn regularly. I love Lindy. Love your easy going style. Say hi to Mose and Haley, Rhonda. Uh, Miss Rhonda, thank you so much. I love your name, Hob Horse. That's classic. Uh, and thank you for the kind words. Lindy is an awesome person. I had her on the channel uh, for a reseller review uh, a couple months ago. She's very cool. Jesus Al Allende, un gran abrazo desde Chile. Bendiciones para ti, hermano. Um, brazo is chest, but abrazo, I don't know. Wait, let me Google Translate. Google Translate. Okay, enter text. Uh, un. <laughs> where did where to go? Don't be a Joey and take forever to list, guys. I think we have all come to the understanding that I'm not going to be listing very much. There are very many items today. Un. Oh, un gran abrazo. Ooh, a big hug. This day from Chile, a big hug from Chile. Bendiciones, blessings for you, brother. A big hug from Chile, blessings for you, brother. Jesus, thank you so much for that. Uh, shout out to my friend Marco in Honduras. Uh, you know, it's crazy. Uh, Haley and I go, well, I don't, I've been three times, three or four times. Haley's been like nine times to Honduras on a mission trip. Uh, we go to the same city, stay at the same like mission house. We work in the same village every year. So we build relationships with people down there. And my friend Marco was a translator uh, the first year I went. Uh, I think I think he was the first, yeah, the first year I went. And he's been back every year. So I've, I've been there three or four times with him. And it's just crazy that there's, like he and I are really good friends. Like I talked to him and we're friends and he lives in Honduras and there's crazy to, it's crazy to think that there are people in other countries that like like Honduras is like a third world country basically the, the 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 
If you think the gap between rich and poor people in America is bad, you should see the gap between rich and poor people in third world countries. Like it's rich people in Honduras are basically like us. They have houses and jobs and go to the grocery store and like prices of items in Honduras are basically the same as they are here. Like gas is actually like $5 a gallon there. So it's actually more expensive in Honduras probably. Like they have Walmarts and it's basically the same stuff as we have here, same price. But there's people literally making like a dollar a day, you know, working in some farm or something. Um, so you never really think there's like real people in these other countries that you could be friends with. So it's just, it's a really interesting aspect. If you ever have a chance to travel outside of your home country, um, especially to serve other people, you should. <sighs> did, did I know how to edit when I first started or I learned after? Um, I, I mean, I, I learned how to edit originally on iMovie and then I, I got PowerDirector on my phone and learn that, which is basically the same as iMovie. Then I got PowerDirector on my computer, which was much more difficult, but it's much easier to edit on once you get the hang of it. But I just, you just pick whatever, like what, I watched a YouTube video about the best video editors, and then I found a video editor, PowerDirector, and then I searched for other YouTube videos about how to use that editing software, and then I learned how to edit. So just find what software works for you in YouTube search. Literally, there's ev everything you could possibly want to learn in life. I'm, I'm convinced I could learn how to perform gallbladder removal surgery just from a freaking YouTube video. Like there's there's YouTube videos about everything. So if you're new and starting out with 10 listings, do you auction or sell through marketplace if you don't have a store? Uh, if you're new on eBay and you're starting out with new stuff, I would sell stuff that's definitely going to sell like video games, webcams, old cell phones, uh, maybe not cell phones, that's expensive. Something that's cheap, like under $50 and something that's gonna sell well, like old video game stuff, like games, controllers, consoles, those are great to sell on eBay first because those are gonna be something that will sell very quickly. You just come in like slightly under marketplace so people don't care that you don't have any feedback yet and they still buy from you. Ship it out on time, pack it right, get it to them, they give you positive feedback and then you can get into more um, weird stuff. I think a lot of people start selling on eBay and they just start listing their precious moments figurines, you know, random tchotchkes that aren't going to sell. Like you have to list things that are going to sell very quickly in order to like eBay is not going to let you list more than five or 10 items if you don't sell anything. So don't list five precious moments figurines, list five Xbox controllers and they'll probably all sell within a week or so, probably sooner than that. And then you kind of take a loss on those and then you can get into listing more and more stuff. Then you can get into the precious moments figurines. Tempted to search gall gallbladder removal surgery on YouTube, but I'll stay here. Thank you so much, Jacob. Make this money. Darn, had gallbladder removal last year. I could have called Harry Tornado or Dr. Tornado. You could have. I'd given you a deal. 1100 bucks. Uh, give Final Cut Pro a shot for Mac. Manual is bigger than a Bible. Yeah, Final. if you have a Mac, so if you have a MacBook, I recommend Final Cut Pro. If, if you want to, if you're just starting out, maybe start on iMovie. It's free. Yeah, like uh, um, there's a lot of YouTubers that use iMovie. It's totally free and it works great. If you want to get in a little bit more advanced, then you can go to Final Cut Pro. I think Final Cut Pro is like two or 300 bucks, like one time fee, maybe less than that now. Last time I checked, it was about two or 300 bucks. It's a great program. Uh, Rally Roots uses Final Cut Pro and I know Cincinnati Picker uses Final Cut Pro. Um, if you have a PC, I recommend PowerDirector. It's like 125, I have PowerDirector 18 and it was like 125 bucks, one-time fee. Great program. I can answer any questions about it. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is for a PC. It's free, but it is incredibly difficult to use. Uh, it has a ton of features, more features than you will ever possibly need as a reseller um, content creator. And it's just too much for me. Uh, then if you have, you can get into Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, which is very good, but it's pretty expensive. It's like, a, I think, it, I don't, I think it's like a monthly fee, which of course, if you have a YouTube channel for five or 10 years, that could get very expensive. Um, but that's what most like big, big YouTubers use is final, is a, a W premiere. Final cut is $2.99. Yeah. Uh, and a bunch of other people use like Filmora. Filmora is good. I think Filmora was like a hundred bucks, maybe. I don't know. The biggest thing is if you, if you use a free, using a free video editor usually gives you like a watermark and like the bottom, where's, so like over here and like the bottom 
the bottom of your screen or maybe at the top of your screen, like the, the powered by StreamYard thing. I have that because I'm not going to pay 20 bucks a month to use StreamYard. That's what they want you to pay to get rid of that duck. And I like the duck, so I'm not going to pay 20 bucks a month to use um, StreamYard. But the same with StreamYard, if you use a free editing software, it's going to usually give you a, a watermark. And honestly, when I see YouTube videos and they've got a watermark in there, that tells me that it's an amateur channel who does not care about his production quality. He doesn't care enough about he, they, that person does not care enough about their YouTube channel to buy a $20 video editor on their phone. You know, Power Directors, Power Director has a, an app for Android, just like five bucks a month. You could get iMovie for free, and it doesn't have it doesn't have a, a watermark. So when I see a watermark, I'm instantly just turned off. I'm like, they don't care about their channel enough to pay 20 bucks to edit a video. And if it's just a one-time video, it's fine. But um, this one guy, he was a, he was making reselling videos, and he was trying to grow his channel. And I told him multiple times, like he he was using Filmora, I think, but like the free version, so it had like Filmora in the big Filmora in the corner of all of his videos. I'm like, dude, that's incredibly distracting. He'll just pay 50 bucks, like. He made like 20 or 30 videos with that. And um, I was like, it just screams amateur. Um, so, yeah. Hello, Lester Jones. So, Power Director is what you use. I'm seriously thinking about it. Do you have an affiliate link? I don't. I probably should. Probably should. I'm excited, guys. I've got some, uh, some sponsorship opportunities coming up. I'm working with, uh, I don't know if I can say them all. Um, but lots of cool stuff. So what I'm what I'm really excited about, I have two sponsors that the products are free. So like they're paying me to like advertise their products on the channel, but they would be free to you guys to use, uh, which is that's the best. <laughs> if people you can you know support me by by going and, and trying out their product and it's totally free. Uh, it's it's it gets more difficult to do sponsored segments on videos when it's like a paid thing. Like, hey guys, go check out this thing that costs two hundred dollars. Nobody's going to do that. So I'm really excited to work with some very reputable companies. Very, very reputable. Congrats on the sponsorships. Well, I haven't been paid yet. So, but I've got three that I'm working I Actually, this guy, so I'm working with like a, instead of me doing all the legwork trying to find sponsorships, this guy is kind of like doing it for me. He's taking my channel analytics and like my, my boundaries for like what I'm comfortable doing in my price range and trying to find companies for me. And he's doing a great job. Great job, Connor is his name. Connor, if you're watching this, thank you for all your help. Is it honey? No. So the thing, honey is just, honey is such a good product that they don't need to pay YouTube advertisers. Like they do, I know Rally Roots did a paid thing for them. Mr. Beast has done paid thing for them, but they're not gonna pay me to promote honey because hun there's, there's no, most of the companies that are going to pay a YouTuber for a sponsorship, any significant amount of money is they probably have a bad product or bad service, um, or at least something that's underappreciated or something that, I don't know, like the Scotch flex and seal thing. Like it was a, it was a good product, but it was just too expensive, you know? So I'm like, I'll promote it. You know, it's not a bad product. It works, it, you know, but it's not, not something I'm going to use all the time, obviously. Um, I got a roll of it right back there somewhere. Um, like, or like Raid Shadow Legends, like that dumb app that like sponsors everybody, you know, that's because it's just a game that they just want people to sign up. But like companies like Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola is not going to pay me to advertise on my YouTube channel because they, they've, they're done. <laughs> they're done advertising. Everybody knows who Coca-Cola is. It's only like. I, I get emails. I probably get 10 emails a week from these like random Chinese companies about drones and male enhancement pills and cameras and, and all this dumb stuff. That's like super cheap. The emails are poorly written. Um, and they're like, Hey, we'll pay you a thousand dollars to make a video. I'm like, no, thank you. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty selective with who I work with. Do I sell something? I sold a poster. Support your friend's poster. Let's see who bought it. Maybe it was somebody in the live stream. Don Haney. Don Haney from Texas. If you're here, I appreciate you for buying that poster. I bought that Scotch stuff because it looked cool and I haven't used it all yet. Yeah, I mean, I, we sold a ton of it. Uh, you know, I had like the Amazon affiliate thing. 
And I think we sold like 200 rolls because uh, they were really cheap. I think they were like five bucks a roll. And that was another reason I did it because they gave me like the discount code and they were on sale. So it was like you know, five bucks. That's almost free. Five bucks free shipping. Um, so we sold a, a ton of that. Um, but again, it's not something I, I think. Uh, what was this? There was some YouTuber that made, made his Scotch Flex and Sale video. I forget who it was, but he his video was like, what's up, guys? I got a brand new product for you. We're not using any boxes anymore. I'm not using poly bags, nothing. We're using the Scotch Flex and Seal totally for all of our items. I'm like, no, you're not. You're not using that stuff. Like, If you pay full retail for that, that's going to be incredibly expensive. So I don't know. I think with sponsorships, you just be honest and only work with companies that you actually believe in. You actually believe it's a good product. Uh, and just be genuine because if you're not genuine and you're just doing it for the money, people are going to be able to see right through it. Trust me. Our Vandalay 499 Super Chat. Can Connor reach out to G Fuel and then you can turn them down? Man, wouldn't that be nice? I would still take a sponsorship from G Fuel or Bang if they ever want to sponsor me or White Claw. White Claw, you want to sponsor my YouTube <laughs> channel? Is it good to edit listings after published? Uh, yeah, I think so. Freshen them up a little bit. All right, let's edit. Let's let's list something else. And my new boots. Look at these boots. Look at those boots. I like them. I need to go boot around somewhere. All right, let's see. There's something in here. In that box. Okay, so this ugh, this box of stuff. Um, do you guys remember like two videos ago? I was thinking a guy named Andy Lepper because he bought a bunch of stuff for me, like ton, like fifteen or twenty things for me so far uh, over the last year. And I met up with him the other day for lunch. He was in town, and he gave me two boxes of Xboxes, two cardboard boxes filled with Xboxes. <laughs> so I don't even know what's in here. We're gonna go through and see. There's <laughs> look at look at this stuff. There's three Xbox 360s in here. Controllers, games. I wonder if there's a Madden. I mean, a NCAA 2014. Doubt it. But how many items do I? How many items do I list in a normal day? Zero. If I'm going to be completely honest, in a normal day, zero items. I, listing is by far what I struggle with most in my business. I love making. I love making YouTube videos. I love doing live videos. Yeah. I love all the YouTube side of stuff and selling stuff, but I don't love listing. NBA, NBA 2K13. PES 2011? No idea what that is. Deuce. Deuce X, Madden 25, Madden 08, NCAA 07. I was 17 years old when this came out. Bad gum. Got another controller. The first one had a little, was a little eat up on the joystick, but it probably still works. This one's a little eat up, but not too bad. This one's good. It's got the white battery pack. This one, you really hooked me up. These controllers should be worth like 20 bucks a piece. Other one, that's the Batman Arkham Origins Major League Baseball 2008 Grand Theft Auto 5. That's a pretty good game, right? Grand Theft Auto 5. Um, hundred dollars for the Xbox box unseen. That's a pretty good, pretty good. Uh, well, now it's seen. So, does your offer go down or up? What's this? NBA NBA 2K13. FIFA Soccer 2008. NBA K, NBA 2K12, NBA 2K401K. 
Uh, and then three Xboxes, three Xbox 360s, slim, slim, and different. I don't know. <sighs> okay. Love watching your videos over in Angs, Anglesey, North Wales, UK. And Jones, thank you. Thank you for watching my videos all the way over in Anglesey. I think my favorite thing about YouTube is the fact that I get to talk to people in different parts of the world. Like I don't know anybody in North Wales, UK, except Ann Jones. So it's cool. Like if I ever want to, um, you know, like travel and like go to North Wales and be like, Hey, Hey guys, I'm going to North Wales next week. If anybody's there and wants to hang out, show me around, let me know. And then Ann could be like, yeah, come on over. <laughs> I'll make you, I'll make you some corned beef and cabbage or whatever you make over there in North Wales. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm inviting myself over to your house. Please, please prepare a room. <laughs> I just think it's cool that I have other people. Like I, I was walking around um, at Harry Potter World, Universal Studios, and I was saying, I was like, I wonder if my here is gonna recognize me. Like it's probably not. You know, there's a huge world, and uh, we were walking, and we I saw this guy who looked just like this guy that Haley and I used to work with at uh, Chick Fil A. I was like, Haley, that looks like Dan Bessels. And she looks, she's like, that is Dan Bessels. And like the, the fact, like the odds of seeing somebody, you know, at a place like Disney World or Universal Studios is just very rare. And I was like, Dan Bessels. And he turned, he's like, Harry Tornado. <laughs> so Dan, good seeing you at, uh, at Universal Studios. LMA, LMA, just invite ourselves over. Be ready. It mows too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. I've had a, a number of people like email me and they're like, hey, we're from, Ohio, you know, if you're ever in the area, we'd be happy to host you and your wife, blah, blah, blah. People are really, really nice. Of course, we get haters on YouTube, too. But for the most part, people are very nice. White Claws. It's not a... I don't think it's very alcoholic. 5%? 5% alcohol. It's very refreshing. Friday afternoon, kind of winding it down from the tough work week. All right, so I'm putting the games up. I'm going to list one of these controllers. Where's this? This one's one on the black. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. We got some battery corrosion. Good thing it's just in the pack and not in the actual. It was in this controller, which I'm less concerned about. I feel like the white ones aren't worth as much as the black ones. It's got some. Did you ever try to like blow? Oh no, it's out of focus. 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 Hello. There it goes. Uh, boo the haters, yeah. Uh, Great. So it brings up what, what do you do for that? Uh, vinegar. Uh, Chris, uh, Krista Hernandez. Vinegar works really well on getting that stuff out. You just a little bit of vinegar with a Q-tip. You can just rub the Q-tip on the area that has corrosion and it should come off. It may not come off instantly, but if you do it enough, you also have to make sure it's worth it. You know, it's really popular with tape recorders like those like manual tape recorders are usually worth a lot of money. But that's those items are typically like people put batteries in there and use them and forget about them, throw them in an office drawer for 10 years realize they're there and donate them to Goodwill. I, the most tape recorders I've found that are open are usually corroded. So if it's worth 10 bucks, it's not worth my time to clean. But if it's worth 80, then it's worth my time. Just like I talked about in the video the other day, you got to make sure it meets the three P's, you know? Profit, prep, packing. All right. I don't know if I want to list this yet because I don't know if it works. I mean, it physically looks fine, but... What if I list it and it sells instantly and then it doesn't work? I'm just going to put it back. Add it to my death pile. I think there's another box. Yeah, there's one more box over there that he gave me. Look. Thank you. 
I don't even know what's in here. So this is a phone set. Clean it, make it worth your while. Five dollars is still five dollars you did not have. Um, while your logic is airtight, um, I am lucky enough to be in a position where 20 minutes of my time is usually worth more than five dollars. So I'm not going to spend 20 minutes of my time like cleaning five dollars of profit into an item. You could if you needed five dollars, but I don't need five dollars that bad. This is just cords. An Xbox 360 wireless adapter. Listen, listen to that. Oh, you can't scratch up the Grand Theft Auto 5. That may be the most valuable, valuable game in there. Excuse me. My favorite store to find items at. Um, I like the Amazon stores. Dang it, I just broke it. I freaking I bent it up. I was trying to bend it up and it literally snapped off. Frick. Oh, it's probably not worth much. Anyway. Five times ten is fifty. Yeah, I'd clean it for fifty bucks. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna clean ten. Your your math is saying if I take twenty minutes to twenty minutes each to clean ten recorders. At five dollars in profit, I would make fifty dollars. So you're saying I'd make fifty dollars for two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty for two hundred minutes of work. That's not worth it. Let's see. Okay, let's see this thing. Debt. Let's look it up. See if it's worth it. Uniden. Um, there's a daggum model number. Debt 6.0. Unfortunately, it's not really worth anything. And there's a brand new one in the box that sold for 22 bucks plus shipping. Uh, I mean, you could sell like individual cords, like the, the phones and bases sell for like $11, $11 plus shipping, but not very often. Two of those? Yeah, I just have one base, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's not going to be worth my time. If you're only making five bucks profit, reselling maybe isn't your thing. Yeah, it's it may not be your thing. Super Six. I hear kids. Uh, yeah, kids are. I don't know, running around. There's this kid that like his dad is in a golf cart, and he the kid is on a bike with training wheels. And I don't know if you guys could just like close your eyes for a second. And picture like a relaxing Friday afternoon. Let's all close our eyes. Relaxing Friday afternoon. You know, the sun is going down a little bit. And then from down the road, the paved asphalt road that you live in, you hear the painful, painful rattling screech of plastic training wheels on the asphalt. With a kid pedaling as hard and fast as his little legs will go. And I love that they're having so much fun. I love it. They're not out there right now. Uh, but it's just very loud. I really want to give him some air, air tires, <laughs> you know, like train, the training wheels are just plastic wheels. So that plastic on the asphalt, is just like, <laughs> like it's so loud. I'm like, get, get some air, pump it up, pump it up. It'll make, give you better balance. I'm going to give it to him for Christmas. Maybe I'll find some, if anybody uh, knows if they sell pump up, pump up, uh, training wheels. Let me know. I'll buy them. All right, we gotta we gotta list some more stuff. Oh, look at this! I found this at Salvation Army a couple a month ago, a couple weeks ago. Guillos, 
Builo's Flan Model Kit, British SE5A. It was $2.99. And I opened it up, and it had this thing still in the package. It had all the paperwork still folded up. It had all the like gun models that you clip up out and stick together. All the stickers are still in there. So that I could tell. Looks good to go. It's got some paper, whatever that is, I guess for the for the plant for the I guess for the wings. And it's got all the the wood. Like un un oh, see that. Unpunched out wood. I think it's complete, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. And I selling model like models are usually really profitable, but like there's no way of knowing. Oops, and then there's some wood punched out at the bottom. I think you can see that. So I don't know. I don't know if I should list this or not. Does anybody want it? <laughs> if you want it, I'll sell it to you for cost. $2.99 plus shipping. <laughs> Just because I'm probably not going to list it because I'm not confident with I'm not confident enough to say that everything's in here. Uh, so if you want it, two nine plus shipping. If you're on the East Coast, it'll probably cost like it's probably not first class. Probably like eight or nine bucks a ship. Yeah, mo models are really good. What's, what happened with Trevor? Um, I don't. I just sold my first item on eBay. Trevor, congratulations! I wish I had a horn or something. <laughs> Congrats, or a way to make a lot of noise. Um, somebody. Enrique Blasco says, I will take it. And uh, he was first. That's all Val said that too, but he was first. So Enrique, uh, shoot me an email, harrytornado at gmail.com. And this is all yours. $2.99 plus shipping. Making a ton of money on that. That's for sure. This is one of those things. I didn't really have a chance to like look at it in the store. I didn't want to. Like pick everything out, so I'm like, oh, I'll just grab it. Turns out it was not a good buy. All right, we gotta find something to list. Okay, let's list some shoes. Well, those aren't clean. Let's find some clean shoes to list. Oh, okay. We'll list these. These are going to be tough, though, because... These are going to be tough because they're so curled. They're so curled, and they're a small size. I think these are a women's 6. No, women's 7.5. Maybe they will. Usually with the smaller sizes, um, they don't fit with my shoe trees. These things that... Keep the shoe from curling up like that. And maybe they will fit. Maybe they just look small. Stretch them out a little bit. <laughs> so much better that looks. That looks so much, so much better instantly. If you guys don't have shoe trees, if you're selling shoes on eBay and you don't have shoe trees, you got to get them. Uh, this is a little, little tight fit. So I don't want to keep it in here too long because I don't want to actually stretch the shoe out. Uh, but these look good. These are Brooks Rebel Rebel Three. Is that yeah? Brooks Rebel Three, Revel Three. These are clean and ready to go. I think. I don't look too dirty. I have a ton of shoes. Can you use? You can use OBS for free. Are you talking about this thing? That stuff you pull out of shoes. You can, but. Do I wash my shoes? I don't wash them, but I clean them. I usually clean like the soles right here with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Uh, if they're really dirty, I'll spray some OxyClean Max Force Stain Remover on there and use a grout brush and like scrub it clean. Usually just rinse the bottom off, make sure there's no like physical dirt on there. Um, and you could scrub the tops too with OxyClean Max Force Stain Remover and use the grout brush on the tops as well. You don't have to make them perfect. You know, it's just good enough to make the sale. These are probably going to be like a $20 pair of shoes anyway. I think I got these at the Goodwill bins. 
So pretty low buy cost. I bought the Scotch Flex and Seal per your recommendation, and I liked it until I had a larger but lightweight item to ship. It's then it seems better to just buy. Yeah, it's it's almost always better to just buy stock uh, like bulk bubble nailers. Um, I I I think the best option for Flex and Seal is like a non reseller who doesn't have shipping supplies and needs to ship like smaller items because if you don't have anything to start with and you can just you have like smaller stuff to ship you can just buy the flex and seal and then you don't have to buy boxes and tape and all that stuff but if you already have boxes and tape i mean it's very very few occasions you're going to be able to use that in in the most profitable way you know but i also said that in my video i was like listen guys you're not going to use this all the time. You can get one $5 roll and it'll probably last you two years because it's going to be so rare that you actually use it. They sent me a bunch of it for free. Like, for like 200 feet. And I still have like three rolls. All right. We got it. Move this up a little bit. I just uh, I just tuck the laces in like that and make it all nice and professional. These look brand new, like they're sitting on a store shelf. And I'm gonna put it this over here. I do like that, like a front, kind of a front ankle, and then the back ankle, and then we take the picture, something something like that. It doesn't really matter. Like Renzi sells way more shoes than I do, and they just take all their pictures like from the side, like normal. So you can do whatever whatever works for you. Hey, I just like to do the little fun angle, just because I think it looks good. And got it. And then I'll do. To the side, the back, and then the other side, front angle, and so upside down to show the soles. And the tag, show the size, and we're done. Josh, if you see this later, message me at Brianna Caldell0214 at gmail.com. Brianna Caldell, I uh, greatly appreciate you being in the chat, but I'm going to be completely 100% honest with you. I'm never going to remember to do that. Uh, the best way to contact me if you have any like private questions or something is to DM me on Instagram. I respond to Instagram messages as a priority. Those are the ones I respond to the fastest. Uh, and I also have an email address, harrytornado at gmail.com. Happy to help you, but I'm never going to remember to message you later. I'm just being honest. I need to invest in, I want to invest in the Harry Tornado IPO. Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll have a public offering. All right, so let's see what these bad boys are worth. Do, do, do. Okay, Brooks, are they Rebel? Three women's running shoes. Huh, there's one that sold for an on auction, November 19th, yesterday, for 35 bucks plus shipping. I was not, I was not expecting that at all. Can you see that? 35 bucks plus shipping. Literally the same exact shoes. Size 8B. 8B isn't B narrow? Uh, thank you for your honest <coughs> honesty. Uh, you're welcome. It's it's Honesty is really just awesome because you never have to worry about anything if you're honest. Even if you do questionable things and you're just honest about it, like when I stole those Pokemon cards from Goodwill. <laughs> I was honest about it. To you guys. 
What would he do with more capital? Small real estate is kind of a product. It's not a money issue. There's a lot of noise. The garage door is open. I'm in my garage right now, and there's people outside in the world. B is wide. B is wide. Why did I think B was narrow? Yeah, what would I do with more capital? Yeah, I don't. I have I have more capital than I know what to do with right now. And I just like I said in yesterday's video, I, I I'm really happy with where things are right now on the reselling side of things. I don't really want to get much bigger than this. The Sandlot, thank you for your support. I had no obligation to tell them there are cards at the bottom of the box. I didn't make any money on the cards anyway, so I actually lost money. So I get what I deserve. Okay, so we're going to go, uh, I'm going to go to that listing, sell one like this, even though these are not wide. These are, actually, it says B. These are B, medium, medium B. You guys see that? Medium B, 7.5, medium B. That is that wide? They certainly don't look wide. That looks normal to me. I think B is normal. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Do 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 Yeah, W is wide. Do I invest? No, I have like 400 bucks in a Robinhood account. <laughs> But that will be changing this year. Not investing. Like we're, I'm starting, I'm finally starting a Roth IRA this year. I'm starting an LLC, change my business over to an LLC. Also, guys, incredibly important. If you are a reseller and you're you're making about, if you're making close to thirty five thousand dollars a year in profit, uh, in your in your business, thirty five thirty five thousand or more, you should form an LLC. Okay, this is not tax advice or legal advice, but if you're making about that amount amount of money or more. Talk to your CPA about forming an LLC and filing your taxes as an S corp um, because I did not do that this year. And obviously I made more than thirty five thousand dollars. So if I would have filed like formed an LLC and filed as an S corp, it would have saved me like a lot of money, probably over ten thousand dollars in taxes, uh, which sucks. So if you're close to that price range, I personally didn't think I'd get that close to it this year. Um, but yeah, good, good problems, I guess. But definitely going to form an LLC for next year. So if we're getting close to that, talk to a professional. I'm trying to save you guys some money. Back hurts. This chair is a yoga ball chair. It's a chair with a yoga ball in it. It's supposed to be good for your back. Why does that hurt so bad? <sighs> dun, dun, dun. My uh, chiropractor, I've been going to... Uh, when I started going to him, he's like, so what do you do for a living? I'm like, I sell on eBay and have a YouTube channel. He's like, oh, YouTube. And like ever since, like he never really asked about my channel, but ever since then he started to get like, I can tell he's kind of like really nerdy for like an older, he's probably like late, I don't know, like 40s, mid 40s or so. But he's like, oh yeah, man, I just love like, you know, going home, watching some YouTube, playing some, playing some Fortnite, you know, I just love chilling Friday night. You know, if you played Among Us, you play, I love playing Among Us. I'm like, no, I haven't played Among Us. <laughs> it's just funny when like older people like try to, I don't know. I, I think they like s try to talk to younger people by like, mentioning young people stuff like gaming and YouTube. And I'm like, I can talk to you about YouTube, but I don't really game that much. <laughs> should you start an escort without making that much or should I just wait? Uh, you should talk to an accountant to see. Um, but like I said, if you're making close to that, like, like actual profit like taxable income of like 35,000 or more you could you should you should do an LLC talk to a professional about doing an LLC yeah he's trying to I could tell he was like trying to bond with me I'm just like uh, uh, just crack my back and get get me out of here <laughs> 40s that's older I, I, old, everybody has their own definition of old if you're four years old 12 is old if you're 12 17 is old it just gets older and older. All right, we got a list. We got a list. These Brooks Revel Three Women's Running Shoes, size size eight B. 
athletic. Um, black, white. Um, comfort. Let's add comfort in there. I honestly don't know if they're very comfortable because I don't wear women's size seven and a half. Uh, but I'm just going to put it in there. 40 is not old. 40 is not old. Age is just a mindset. I know people like I play golf with this guy one time. I Anytime I go, I don't really have friends that play golf with me. So when I go to play golf, I usually just go by myself. And then if there's other people there, like a, a, a twosome or a threesome, I'll just join them. And this one guy, he was like 90 years old. And they're like, all right, you can play with him. I'm like, oh, friggin' 90 year old. Come on, man. But he was great. Like he, he walked the whole time. Walk, he only played nine holes, but he walked the whole time. He actually played really well. I beat him, but but he played pretty well for a 90 year old. He was getting around there and carrying his like he had a little cart for his clubs. It, I mean, age is just a number. I know 50 year olds that are like bedridden because they're so out of shape, you know, but age don't mean nothing. Comfort. OK, pre owned Brooks Black. They're not size eight. Wait. Oh, yeah. Look at there. Almost messed up the side size. These are seven and a half, not eight. Seven point five B. Okay, so now we got to change item specifics. That's important too. If you're if you're using the sell similar feature or sell one like this feature on eBay, make sure you go and change the make sure the shoe size is correct, not only in the title but in the um, item specifics as well. I've made that mistake a few times. Sneaker, women, athletic, uh, colorful, comfort, cross training. Blah, 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 blah. The other 40 categories I will leave empty. Condition is pre-owned. Ship with USPS priority mail. Very good. Used condition. Please see photos for details. And let's, let me show you this. I don't know if you can see that. I have like, honestly, I don't remember how. It, oh, what is this? Seth. JG3D, $5 super chat. Hey, man, I'm David's bro from Hilton Head. I was wondering if you wanted wanted logos or something else graphical. I'll send you an email. Uh, Seth, yeah, send me an email. HarryTornado at gmail.com. I'll take a look. Uh, and then Bill Bill Tackett, flips to pay the bills. $20 super chat. I don't get to catch many lives anymore, but I wanted to pop in while you were live and show some support uh, for all that I've learned from your channel. Thanks, Josh. Bill, thank you so much. I don't really know a lot of stuff, but I share what I do know. And if that helps people like you, I greatly appreciate you watching. And it's cool that you're learning something. Um, so this, again, I don't know how to set it up, but my phone just happened to do it. And now I have like predictive text set up. Set up. So I don't know if you see it, but very good use condition. Please see photos for details and let me know if you have any questions, period. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but it does. I guess I typed it so many times that it just like predicts now. So that saves me a lot of time. You could also copy and paste every time, but I just do the predictive text. Pricing, how much should I price these at? That one sold for 35 plus shipping. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, let's do 39. Be a little 39, let's turn on offers. And uh, I'll do free shipping because honestly, I thought these were going to be like twenty dollars shoes, like twenty dollars plus shipping. So if they sell for thirty nine, I'll make like twenty nine. It'll cost like ten. Well, these are probably fit in the padded flat rate envelope because um, they're very very small. Um, so it'll cost like eight bucks to ship out. So I make like twenty twenty eight twenty nine dollars. I really like the hoodie. Thanks. I haven't sold these yet. So this is a champion hoodie. Uh, I got it from Printful, which is the website I use for all my other stuff. But Obviously, a champion hoodie like is it's more expensive. You know, if I want to sell the Gildan ones, those are cheaper. Um, but these, like this one, cost me like thirty five dollars. Like that's how like wholesale. So if I were going to sell these on eBay to like you guys, I'd have to charge like fifty bucks. You know, after um, you know shipping and like printfuls charge and everything to make any money. And I just feel weird about charging fifty bucks for a hoodie. But if enough of you guys want one, they're really nice. It's champion brand. This is embroidered. Let me see that. It's embroidered. It's not a, a print. So it's really nice. Okay. Free priority shipping. Pounds. All my shoes, I just do two pounds. Some of them are under, some of them are over. It doesn't really matter. Okay, I think I'm going to put it in the package. The dimensions. For the dimensions, I'll do 15 by 8 by 5. 
which are the rough dimensions of a USPS priority shoebox, just in case these have to go in a shoebox. Uh, $39, free shipping, and best offers turned on, list my item. Done. So we have listed three things. <laughs> this has been pretty successful. An hour and 34 minutes and 58 seconds. All the kids are hip to champion right now. Yeah, man, back in the day, I remember if you were champion in the school, you were picked on because that's that's Kmart crap. I, I, it's just insane, the story of champion, how they literally went from like... Is that... I thought somebody was <laughs> my ankle. I thought somebody was in the driveway, but they weren't. Um, like how Champion went from like a nobody, like nobody wants to wear Champion. Champion is for like poor people. Like, oh my gosh, can't believe we're in Champion. To somehow getting into Urban Outfitters and making their hoodies that were no normally like seven bucks at Kmart now like eighty to two hundred. You know, depending on the graphic. It's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It goes to show the power of like branding and like if you literally you could just take these hoodies but oh these are these aren't cheap hoodies anymore it's the same brand but they're not cheap anymore we're going to charge five hundred dollars for these and they did and people bought them people were like oh you know you put a five hundred dollar price tag on something people are going to think that it's worth five hundred dollars mr big time you're in columbia south carolina i'm right down the street from you uh yeah well i'm actually i live in lexington south carolina but in Columbia, yeah. Well, guys, we listed three things. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good for the day. Honestly, need to list way more than that. Um, I'll show you. I got these shoes. I got these at Crazy Cas Boys today. These are some Foot Joy golf shoes. Really nice. They're used, obviously. Same with Fila. Yeah, who cares about Fila? Why, why is Fila so expensive? These are, again, are used. They got some dirt and stuff on the bottom, but really, really nice. What size are these? Ten and a half wide. I love that wide, baby. Wide is always worth a little bit more money. Got a little bit of brown, a little brown stain right there, but these are the Foot Joy Pro SL. Let's see what these are worth. Not too bad. Pre-owned. So the blue ones. Mm, oh, there's the blue ones. Pro SL blue. Okay, so there's brand new. Sold for eighty-five bucks. One bid. Twelve eighty-five dollars plus twelve dollars shipping, uh, and that's nine point five medium regular. So I think used. I could probably get like fifty bucks, fifty to sixty bucks, maybe plus shipping. Just got to get them cleaned up a little bit. Take a little magic eraser to that brown spot, and that should that should do the trick. Looks like they were just worn like maybe one round at the beach because there's a little seashell seashell tidbit in there. Um, okay. These are, I think my back hurts. I think it's because I'm leaning over. If they come in uh, color options like the shirts, I'll buy a hoodie. Uh, not as many. I think the champion only has, I think, like four or five different colors. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Are you actually filling in all the items requested by eBay? Um, I mean, if it's required, if it's a required field, I am, but I'm not doing any of that other stuff. There's like 40 different categories of items that they or item specifics they ask for and that's i only do what's required it's my life motto uh, thank goodness i don't have to depend on reselling for a living uh what do you depend on for a living i like depending on reselling for a living in dallas we don't have an amazon return store i'm surprised we have a ton of huge amazon warehouses um usually i mean the amazon I've had the, I've had people say that they're like, oh, we just got an Amazon fulfillment center in our town, so maybe they'll open up an Amazon return store as well. But they're not they're not put on by Amazon. These people that own these stores have nothing to do with Amazon, other than the fact that they buy stuff from them. Um, we got another Ben store today. Like we had Dream Deals opened up in October, Crazy Cowboys opened up 
No, Dream Deals opened up earlier than that. I don't know, like two or three months ago. Crazy Cats Boys opened up three weeks ago. And then over Overstock Bins, my friend Steven started another bin store and opened his today. So now we have three Amazon bin store, like six dollars, six, seven dollars for everything in the store uh, within like 15 minutes of me. I feel like they're going to run out of returns <laughs> eventually. What's the one clothing item you pay up for not thrifting yourself, but a retail setting? One clothing item. Look at this. I did a little retail arbitrage the other day. Took a chance. I've never really had much retail arbitrage success at TJ Maxx, but I found this shirt and I thought it would be, thought it'd be cool. It is a uh, Polo Ralph Lauren shirt. It's got some cool patchwork on the sleeves, both sleeves. It's got a little patch on the chest. Whatever that is, 67. Uh, retail price, MSRP is $228, and I got it for 40 bucks, TJ Maxx. So I don't know. I got to list it. I got to clear out the flat lay spot and list it over there. Unless somebody else wants it, uh, it's a extra large, adult extra large. I thought it was pretty cool. $228 retail. I mean, I figured I could pay 40 bucks for it, maybe list it for like 100, 100 free shipping, turn on best offer. If I can get 80 bucks for it, that'd be doubling my money. That'd be pretty cool. Woodstock much. Uh, fun fact, I'm only, I'll be 30 next week. Black Friday is my birthday. Um, and I am not old enough to know Woodstock. I know it's like an old, what was it, outdoor concert or something? One of the first outdoor concerts, festivals or something. It's kind of like Coachella, but original. Still with the tags too, yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. I don't. I don't usually. They they had this north, uh, north this north face jacket. It was like really really fancy, like really thick, bright yellow, um, like just a really really nice jacket. Original manufacturer's retail price on the jacket was like five hundred and ninety nine dollars, and they had it at TJ Maxx for a hundred and ninety nine dollars. I'm like, man, that would be some really good profit, you know, like the six hundred dollar retail, even if you sell it for. 300 sell it for half off you still make 100 bucks you know or yeah yeah 199 to 100 so uh i don't know do you think there's gonna be a saturation point for reselling no i think a lot of people get into reselling and they have one or two good flips but then they realize like it's hard and they see a little bit of competition and they're like oh this is this is it you can't make a living doing this um i think i think there's always gonna be ways to make a living doing this especially in the united states our, our society is such a throwaway society and people just get rid of stuff all the time that they just have no idea about um, and what the value is. Even people that know the value of something, they don't want to deal with selling it on eBay. Like I have people all the time that like, hey, I've got this girl messaged me yesterday. She's like, hey, we have an old Nintendo Switch that my kid doesn't play with anymore. Do you do you want it to sell? I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, the, the price is right. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I think it's uh, I think it's fine. How much profit do you need to get from an item in order you consider work for your time? Um, I don't know. I, I like to look at like all aspects of it, like how easy it is to list. You know, if it's like we were talking about earlier, if it's a tape recorder that I've got to like clean, if a tape, tape recorder worth $20 in working condition, 20 free ship, but I have to spend 20 minutes cleaning it, cleaning the battery compartment, that's not worth my time. Because by the time it's 20 minutes of my time to clean it, another five minutes to list it, it'll be easy to pack. But, you know, 25 minutes to list that item. It sells for 20 bucks, free shipping. I'm gonna make like 15 bucks on it. That, that's not worth my time. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, if I've got smaller things like video game, video games are really easy to list. Like this disc, this uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh! <laughs> this Grand Theft Auto Five that is totally not scratched uh, in working condition. Um, I, f I feel like I bought this game like the digital download. Cause it used to be for free on like Xbox game pass or something. But it, when it wasn't free, it was like $50. Um, Cause they don't, they don't release new Grand Theft Autos anymore. They just keep updating this game. Um, so I feel like this game's probably worth like 20 bucks, you know, the disc disc alone. So something like this would be worth my time. Cause I don't need to clean it. You know, I can throw it in the Xbox and test it out, but I can just play it, you know, um, just get it listed. Super should sell pretty quick. Uh, should be really easy to, just to ship, you know, so I think it's, uh, I think this is something, this would be worth my time. 
Do you ever use the app next door? I do not. I do not. Um, Commonwealth Flipper. What's up, man? Teacher, my time comes cheap. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, what do you do with the items that don't sell? How long do you wait to take them off eBay? I rarely take items off of eBay. Once an item is listed, it can sit for as long as it wants because I'm not paying with my store. I'm not paying insertion fees. So it doesn't cost me money to leave an item listed on eBay. It'll sell eventually. If it doesn't, well, I mean, whatever. I, I donate stuff and get rid of stuff out of my death pile all the time. But once I've been through the work of like cleaning and listing an item, I'm not going to take it out of my store no matter how long it's been listed. GTA 5 for Xbox 360 is a $5 shipped game. Well, then that wouldn't be worth my worth my time. I just remember. I, oh, yeah. I had it for Xbox One. That's the difference. Xbox One was like 50 bucks for the digital download. Um, okay. Shirt, cool, but I'm not going to list it because I need to. Oh, man. Back hurts. I'm going to list this item. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's a crazy cast boys find and a pretty good one. So we'll just have to watch my video to, uh, to see. Or I guess you could look at my eBay store where I listed it and you can see that. Do I have all the different gaming consoles to test games? No, I do not. I have an Xbox 360, an Xbox One, and a Nintendo Wii, and a Nintendo 64. All right. Back, man. Okay. Cincinnati Picker just uploaded a new video. Threatening message. Okay, professor. Oh, Haley's home. Haley's home from work. Okay, I'll end it. This was good. Almost two hours, 355 people watching. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, hit the like button for me. If you haven't, go, go watch my income video for yesterday. The video is severely underperforming i guess people don't want to hear how much money i make uh but you don't have to watch it just go click on it and click the like button and then then leave i greatly appreciate it thank you guys for watching and hope you have a great weekend catch you guys on the next one end end broadcast